Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews. Welcome to Harbaugh. More grim news from Iraq today. The U.S. military reports a fifth American helicopter crashed near Baghdad, killing all seven crew members. The incident is under investigation. And the Associated Press reports that more U.S. troops have been killed in Iraq over the past four months than in any comparable period before, ever since the war began. This week, the Republicans successfully shut down the debate in the Senate over the president's plan to escalate the war. For now, the Senate won't debate any resolution. But the House of Representatives will next week, apparently. House Democrats plan to vote on a resolution opposing the U.S. troop increase in Iraq. Later, we'll talk with two California members of Congress, Congressman Dan Lundgren, a Republican, and Congresswoman Maxine Waters, both of California, to preview that House floor debate and fight. We'll also hear from Hardball's David Schuster with the latest news from the Scooter Libby trial. But first, with a slim majority, what can Senate Democrats do about Iraq? Jim Webb is a Democratic senator from Virginia. He serves on both the Foreign Relations and the Armed Services Committee. Senator Webb, can the Democrats do what they promised to do in the election, we, which you won last November, bring the issue of the war in Iraq to the floor for debate and decision? Well, we're doing everything that we can. and, and uh... Quite frankly, over the last couple of weeks, we worked uh, pretty pretty closely with a number of Republicans, as you know, uh, to try to uh, get language that would be acceptable to both parties. This, to me, if this is more an issue of the congressional uh, authority versus the executive branch, the presidency, than it is uh, Democrat Republican. But we obviously hit a hit a wall uh, over the last couple of days. Why doesn't one of you play Mr. Smith goes to Washington, go to the floor, take it over, don't leave it till you have a vote? Uh, that's probably easier to do in the House. Uh, I, I was a committee counsel over there for four years than it is in the Senate. I think that the proposals that the majority leader put, leader put forward are, are good proposals. And uh, honestly, I just I think right now the Republican leadership just does not want to vote because they know they're going to lose. I mean, all of this uh, uh, sturm and drang about uh, the uh, the amendment offered by uh, Senator Gregg is is kind of it's almost irrelevant to where we are. The language of the Gregg Amendment, which uh, has been the sticking point, is actually in uh, the Warner Levin measure that we're trying to debate. So you don't feel like being Jimmy Stewart in this and just saying I'm going to stop the Senate from doing any other business till it takes up the number one issue in the country, which is the war. Well, I I made a pretty strong statement yesterday and and I'm doing what I can where I'm one of a hundred people here and I, and I think that uh, quite frankly uh, Harry Reid has done just about everything he can at this point uh, one thing that we're going to see however is that uh, when the uh, after we do the continuing resolution when we have the 9-11 uh, report coming to the Senate floor they're going to allow amendments there are going to be a number of amendments on uh, Iraq I'm actually considering uh, putting in an amendment about Iran well, let me ask you about Iran, because a lot of people, me included, wonder whether this administration might get us involved in a second war in that part of the world, the Mideast. In other words, get in a war with Iran. Does the president have the constitutional authority to go to war with Iran without checking with your uh, branch of government? I don't believe he does. And there, there are two situations with respect to Iran. The first is, as I said yesterday, on the issue of uh, Iraq and how to move forward. The great frustration that I have is that we, have, we don't even have half a strategy here. I mean, we, we have uh, a continuing military policy every time uh, there's, a, there's a, an escalation of the violence inside Iraq. But we have not had an aggressive diplomatic offensive by this administration that matches the quality of our, our military performance and that would embrace these countries in the region in a, in a way that we can get a diplomatic solution. You're not going to do that unless we go to Syria and Iran, as many people have said. Now, with respect to the administration and Iran uh, specifically, I asked Secretary of State Rice uh, last month in a hearing, uh, I read the presidential finding on the on the uh, resolution of O2, which basically said from this administration that uh, uh, they believe they have a lot of requisite authority, and possibly including Iran. I asked her to clarify that. I've not received a clarification, and I'm considering putting a uh, a resolution in that basically uh, says that no previous. Uh, resolutions, no previous law empowers this administration wow. to unilaterally go into Iran. 
I don't know the number of countries in the world right now, Senator. Maybe you don't. It's probably under 200. But does the president hold the authority to attack any one of them if he wants to under this requisite authority that's mentioned here? This is a big problem. If you read the language, I would of the say so. He can attack just, England basically yeah, on this reading. Yeah, you know, and if you look at the, the 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 framers of the Constitution, they wanted to give the president, as commander in chief, the authority to repel sudden attacks. That is totally different than conducting a preemptive war. And you know, one thing, if you look at where we are in the Persian Gulf right now, uh, when I was Secretary of the Navy, and until very recently, we never operated carrier uh, aircraft carriers inside the Persian Gulf because number one, the turning radius is is uh, pretty close, and number two, the the chance of of accidentally uh, bumping into uh, something that would start uh, a diplomatic situation was pretty high. We now have been doing that, and with the tensions as high as they are, I'm I'm very worried that we might accidentally set something off in there, and we need to, as a Congress to to get ahead of the ball game here. Before Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt was known to have engaged in that kind of activity in the North Atlantic, creating perimeters out there and daring the Nazi uh, fleet, uh, the U-boats, to attack within that perimeter, and basically month after month increasing that perimeter until he thought he had perhaps uh, been in a situation to gin up a war with a country he hated and wanted to see us fight. Turns out, that, uh, of course, that uh, Pearl Harbor intervened. Is this president trying to do the same thing, do you think, trying to create a situation where it's easy for Ahmadinejad to do something wrong and create an act of war? Well, there, there are, again, even on the military side, there are two different situations. One is if there are Iranian military people actively involved inside Iraq as a, as a former Marine, I would support the notion of tactically engaging them. Uh, I haven't seen concrete evidence of that, but that's mm -hmm. one situation. The other situation, I do think that this administration has been pushing the envelope and that we need a clear set of guidance from the Congress about when you can conduct uh, preemptive war. Preemptive war is, it was not even a concept until about uh, 13 or 14 years ago. What's the difference between preventive war, preemptive war, and starting a war? Um, it seems to me preemptive war is what I think Hitler did against uh, Poland. The, the, you know, a preemptive he, attack. I mean, what does preventive yeah. mean? It seems like you start a war, but you call it a preventive war. Isn't that simply nomenclature? If you I, started I think, military action against another country, you've started the war, well, haven't you? I, I, you know, we, we've all, always had a concept of a preemptive attack. If you see, uh, for sure. instance, a terrorist right. element, you know, getting ready to hit you, That's you can preemptive. hit them first. Probably preventive, but preemptive because Bush war, talks about preventive, not preemptive. Yeah, he doesn't pre say like Israel did back in '67 when they saw the screws being tied. And war coming, and everybody well, mobilized. They said we got to act. That's preemptive. Preemptive, war, preventive pre is when you just say we don't like the other guy's cut of his jib. We're going after we him. Can, I don't think we should be doing either in terms of a war, preemptive or preventive. And the language, if you look at the presidential finding on the O2 resolution, is very loose. It even goes to threats or other concerns, and that's yeah. why we're going to be seeing Secretary of State Rice in the next day or two. I'm going to again present this to her, and if they don't give us a clear answer, I'm going to introduce a resolution. I thought the Democrats back. When they went along with this war, people like Gephardt, especially Gephardt, managed to get one bit of concession out of the administration that the war on Iraq would only be the war they're going to fight. That they didn't give them a complete blank check to fight any country in that region or around the world. Uh, maybe we should both do some legislative history checking here, but I do wonder whether the Democrats didn't get that small concession from President Bush when they agreed to basically toe his line. They certainly didn't, if, if you read the presidential finding. They may have thought that they did uh, when, they were, when they were debating it, but as you know, you know I, I and a number of people, including Tony Zinni, two for, uh, General Hoare, two former CENTCOM commanders, were basically saying, this is not the way to deal with the war against international terrorism. You don't tie your military up into one spot uh, and, and create essentially a, a strategic mousetrap. It was a very bad strategic decision for us to go in Iraq in the first place, and we're not going to get out of there until okay, we have the right Senator. kind of diplomatic environment. Let's talk about your senior senator, Republican senator from your state, the former chairman of the Armed Services Committee, John Warner, a big friend of this show. John Warner wants to do something about uh, objecting to this uh, escalation of 21,000 troops. However, he's taking the Republican side on procedure. What's he doing? Well, I have, a, I have a long regard for John Warner, as you know, and I think he and I are in the same place in terms of, of uh, the concern about this administration and a lack of, a, of, of, of a, an overt diplomatic formula. Uh, he had to kind of go with his leader, I think, on this, and I'm hoping that we can work this out because, uh, quite frankly, you know, uh, Senator Reid, Senator Levin went a long way working with Senator Warner to try to make sure we had something yeah. that was palatable to the Republican side, or at least a portion of the Republican side anyway.
Is the Republican leadership really playing hardball with these guys and demanding that they buckle to the party line on procedural votes? Is that what's going on? That's what it looks like. I, I, I don't think they want to vote. You know, I think they know they will lose a vote. But quite frankly, ending this war is more important than embarrassing a president. Do you think you're going to get a bipartisan agreement sometime in the next couple of years on opposing this war escalation? I hope that we can do that in relatively short order, uh, enough of a bipartisan agreement to get an affirmative vote. Why don't you meet outside the Senate chamber out in front there in the parking lot, all the senators who want to oppose this war, and just put your hands up in the air and say we're voting against this escalation. You don't have to do it in the meeting room. Well, I I've think, always wondered I think, why you just can't meet outside and say, we got five Republicans joining us or seven Republicans. We'll agree to meet outside, put our hands in the air, which says, we don't like your escalation, Mr. President. We don't need regular order to do that. You, you, you probably have a lot of that going on, but we obviously have to formalize it on the floor. Well, I'd rather have less dignity and less war. Anyway, thank you very much, Senator Jim okay, Webb of you. Virginia. Coming up, why are the same people still